How's it going everyone? My name is Kay Mully. Pokemon Fire Road with only a Barboach was quite the interesting run. Today I want to move up to Generation 4 and see if I can beat Pokemon Platinum with only Cacnea. Generation 4 introduces the physical special split for moves. Cacnea is a great physical and special attack, both at 85, which it can benefit from in this game. Its defenses are both 40, low 50 health, and awful 35 speed. So we'll hit hard but only if we can survive. Unlike Cacturn, Cacnea is a pure grass type and doesn't have the extra dark typing. By level up we get some pretty good moves including Sucker Punch, a 75 powered physical dark type with priority. For TMs, Payback is another good move which doubles in power if we were hit first. In Platinum there's additional move tutor moves we can learn during the normal adventure which may be beneficial down the road. One of these moves being Thunder Punch, a 75 electric physical move that can be useful for countering flying types. I'm writing the script before I begin the challenge. With enough luck, we can win this. The Elite Four will definitely take a lot of trial and error. Rules are pretty simple, only Cacnea in battle. I can use other Pokemon for HMs, but they can't fight. No using items in battle except for Hell items, and no glitches or exploits. Using the Universal Pokemon Randomizer, I place Turtwig with Cacnea so that our rival will have Chimchar. This will make the challenge even tougher. I nickname it Sokka since it's based off a of Cactus, Scarecrow, and Sokka trips out off the Cactus Juice from Avatar. First rival fight, and we only have Poison Sing, Absorb, and Leer. We can Poison Chimchar, but by the time its health is low enough, it outspeeds and finishes off. Our nature is serious, so no buffs or debuffs. I'm not thrilled about that, but it's better than nothing. After getting the Pokédex, Rowan gives it the TM for Return. Return does more damage the more friendly the Pokémon is, essentially dealing up to 120 base power. I'm not sure if I want to teach it right away, but definitely later on. In Jubilife City, we pick up the Quick Law, an item that makes it so that we attack first more often in battle. Considering Cacnea's awful speed, this will be used a lot. The next fight with Barry goes smoothly. For our like I set up with growth as Absorb is better than Poison Sing, and by the time Chimchar is sent out, Absorb is strong enough to make swift work of it. Okay, so Roark has three rock type Pokemon. Geodude is first, and I set up with growth. Absorb can one shot Geodude and Onyx, but Cranidus is a bit bulkier. We try learning Sand Attack at level 17, which lowers accuracy, but we are too slow for it to be useful. I misclicked on Poison Sing against Kranidos, but it didn't even matter as two Absorbs were enough to take it down. Okay, finally facing off against Team Galactic. Mars starts off by sending out Zubad. Zubad is easy, but Paragly is a beast, both literally and figuratively. Its fake out hits hard and flinches us. My first attempt involved trying Leech Seed, which doesn't help, and next I try setting up with Growth on Zubad. Paragly has lower special defense, so Zorb should do more damage. Unfortunately, it outspeeds us with its whopping 112 base speed. After some training outside the Valley Works, we reach level 24. The additional stat increases allow us to hit harder with the Zorb in return, and give us enough HP to use growth multiple times. And with that, we win! Okay, so my first attempt at the Grass Gym doesn't go that well. Her Turtwig gets off for Reflect, raising her team's defense. Pen, Mi Pen Missile works like a charm and takes out her Turtwig, but our return barely leaves a dent in Roserade. I'll have to try against after some more grinding. At level 30, our attack set is high enough to let Return and Fan Attack do some real damage. I use Growth and Absorb during the Turtwig fight so that I can get as close to full health as possible for Roserade. She's able to get off a Stunspawn, but we are able to land a critical Fan Attack. Last up is Cherim, which uses two Grass Knots bringing it down to half health. We get really lucky and finish her off with a Fan Attack. Now that we have cut, I go back to the old Chateau and pick up the Dreadplate. This will boost our Fan Attack and other Dark type moves by 20%. While well, it's nice, I still prefer having the Quick Claw. Okay, this Jupiter fight went absolutely awful. Her Stunk Tank versus all of her moves, and the ones that can do some damage can barely make contact. Night Slash also has a high critical hit rate, so there's that we have to deal with. After some trial and error, I am able to power up our turn to a stronger base power. By the time Stunk Tank lowers our accuracy with Smokescreen, all I have to do is land a Fan Attack, which I can't miss. Fantina goes exactly how you think it would. We have a strong dark type move to use against her ghost type Pokemon. I haven't played Platinum in a long time, so solving the maze was actually really fun to uh, experience again. Her Haunter was the only one able to deal any damage with Shadow Claw, but went down with two fan attacks. We did learn Sucker Punch during the fight, which we replaced gro Growth with. It's 80 power dark type move that goes first if the opponent chose an offensive move. So we try heading east, and we have another rival battle. His team is actually starting to get tougher to deal with, but eventually I do get a run where we use Fan Attack and return at a higher power. His Monferno and Saravia are starting to get tougher from this point on. I attempted the Maylean fight and it does not go well. Meditite is no issue, but we can't put a dent in Lucario even at 9 levels higher than it. 
so I go ahead and purchase Natural Gift from the department store. It's a move that's type and damage is determined by the berry being held. Since Lucario's is steel type, I plan on equipping a bulk berry to deal physical fire type damage. Once we get to Pastoria City, we have another encounter with our rival. It was at this point I noticed that if there's no held berry, then Natural Gift won't work. So essentially, we'll have only three moves to use. I decided to, we need to go ahead and learn Thunder Punch. We need to trade two red shards and six blue shards in order for the move to, to teach us. There are a few shards available to us, but the majority of them need to be mined from the underground. I'm not a fan of this since there's no way to predict which items we'll get per pocket. The only other option at this point is to wait each day at the Great March and receive a shard from an ace trainer, but this is random as well. My first attempt doesn't go well. I lead with Thunder Punch so the four time damage can counter out our attack drop. Th that works fine, but Floats of Soul survives and finishes it with Ice Fang. In the attempt you're seeing now, I use Needle Arm as the lead while holding Metronome. It's a held item that increases our power when we use the same move over and over. We need to be full power to finish off Floats of so we saw while Metronome builds up our power. Floats of Soul gets us down to 7 health, but Needle Arm is able to take it out next turn. It's a good thing we switched to Needle Arm since this last member, Quagsire, is a part ground type. After that, we get our 5th badge. Finally time to fight Cyrus. He leads with Neasel, which I predict to outspeed us, since it's Dark type and Ice type. Using Drain Punch will be 4 times effective on it and restore a good chunk of our health. We outspeed Golbat and take it out with a Thunder Punch. Last is Murkrow, which gets off a nasty drill pick leaving us with 18 health. Luckily Thunder Punch is able to take it out in one hit. Okay, so the next berry fight is awful. How awful? So awful that I finally, getting it after getting a good attempt, I didn't want to write about it until a few days later. Strapter's fine, lowers our attack like usual, but Heracross is now a threat. Aerial Laser and Horn Attack are two additional super effective moves we have to worry about. So I mess around with different items. Uh, Zap Blade is good for Thunder Punch, but we lose out on speed priority and power increase. Metronome is good as our moves increase in power if used in repeat. The Expert Belt boosts our super effective moves. And my final attempt, I won with Quick Claw. We need the extra chance of going first against Infernape, even though we can survive a few of its moves. The Steel Type Gym was as easy as you think. I went with Metronome equipped and a Drain Punch at 8 power points. The Gym battle is pretty straightforward, but while fighting one of the Ace Trainers, we ran into Scizor. This level 40 Bug Steel Type was able to one shot us with X Scizor while being 24 level weaker than us. One of, the elite, one of the Elite 4 members used Scizor on his team, so this is something we'll need to remember for later on. I have never had any issues with Ice Types until taking on this gym. Candace's Frost Last is able to get, use Blizzard successfully each time, despite it only having 70 accuracy. Once we get a level 70, it seems like we can outspeed more often. Drain Punch works really well against her team, as we can heal off the majority of damage we take from them. Faint Attack is the best counter for Frost Last as it's part Ghost type. After jumping into the Distortion World, we face off against Cyrus for one last battle. This took me 6 attempts to win, the usual issue being slow. It was really trial and error for us to outspeed Houndoom with our Quick Claw. Flamethrower brings us down to 19 health and we encounter with Drain Punch, restoring our health in the process. We outspeed Crowback and Haunch Crow and knock them out with a Thunder Punch each. Weavile uses x Scissor, which seems weird as Ice Shard would be 4 times effective in Stab. We luckily survive it with only 1 HP and use Drain Punch. Last up is Gyarados and even with Intimidate lowering our attack stat, Thunder Punch is able to win us the battle. Alright, last gym is Vulcaners and his team packs quite the shock. I'm stupid and forget to restore Fan Attack's power points, but end up not being important. Jolteon goes down with a Fan Attack and Drain Punch, but not before getting off an Iron Tail and lowering our defense in the process. Raichu hangs on with a bit of health and heals up next turn. The next Drain Punch happens to be a critical hit and takes it out. Luxury scares me. I didn't feel confident that Fan Attack would one-shot it, so I went with Needle Arm, hoping for a flinch. I get a red health and actually pull off the flinch. It restores with, with a Citrus Berry and another Needle Arm finishes it off. His final member is Electrifier, and I forgot it was level 50. And I totally forgot his moveset and went with the Needle Arm again to see if Lightning could strike twice in the same spot with the flinch. By some miracle, I get the flinch and end things off with one more Needle Arm. Okay, one last fight against our rival. This is an absolute nightmare. So our Raptor is up first and cuts our attack with Intimidate like usual. Uh, Thunder Punch takes care of it, but Thunder Punch isn't enough to take out Heracross. A few levels higher and we get a run where our Raptor goes down with Thunder Punch and Heracross goes down with the critical Thunder Punch. Infernip is up next and outspeeds us. Keep in mind for most of these battles, I have the Quick Claw in hopes of attacking first. We can survive a th Flamethrower at full health, but Thunder Punch is too weak and only brings it down to half. Next turn, it finishes us with Shadow Claw. I went ahead and replaced Fan Attack with Poison Jab. It's an 80 power physical poison type move with a 30% chance of poisoning. Although Heracross is weak against it, it still requires two uses to take it down. What's nice is that Heracross lowers its defense after close combat, making our lowered attack stat break even. 
Cacnea has Sand Veil for an ability. This raises its evasion during a sandstorm, or in technical terms, lowers the accuracy of a move to use against it by 4 fifths. Plus, the extra chip damage helps out. I set up Heracross and Sandstorm only lasts for 5 turns. Infernate misses with Focus Blast twice, allowing us to successfully use Poison Jab enough times to bring it down. Rose Raid is up next, and it has pretty low defense, so we can outspeed and take it in one shot. Floatzel should be an easy one shot, but gets off a nice thing. We only survive with 2 HP, but don't fortunately get frozen in the process. Next turn, we lose to Aqua Jet. So I completely forgot that we can learn Storage Dance from the game corner. I go ahead and replace Sandstorm with it. After my 40 plus attempts at this fight, I notice we can tank a couple of hits from Heracross. During its turn, I set up with Sword Sands to get rid of the debuff from Intimidate. With this defense drop from Close Combat, I figure Drain Punch should be able to take it out while restoring a good amount of our health. Infernape goes for Flamethrower once again, and we are able to take it with 22 health remaining. Poison Drive is boosted enough to one-shot it, and Rose Raid goes down as before. Floatso is no match at for Thunder Punch, and last up is Snorlax. I was afraid that it would survive with barely any health, so I went for Drain Punch to heal off some damage. Luckily, we finished it off with that one punch. First of the lead four is Aaron. I bring back Needle Arm as we no longer need Thunder Punch. Literally, Start Raptor was the only reason I had it at all. His team is pretty much a one shot each with Poison Jab, but I do use Sword Stance in preparation for Scizor. I was pretty skeptical that it would use a strong Bug Sight move and one shot us. His final member, uh, Drapion, survives Drain Punch and gets off a few cross poisons. Our defense is pretty high, so we can take tank them. It restores its health with a Citrus Berry before going down next round. Birth this team is an easy sweep with a Needle Arm. I feel as though we are a bit overpowered right now. The only noteworthy thing in this battle is Gliscar using Fire Thing on us. Truthfully, if I had thought of the Sword Sands team earlier, then the time I spent on the rival fights would have been cut in half. The extra levels could actually prove to be necessary for the next two battles, so I shouldn't jinx myself. Wow, Karma really sucks! We actually lost to Flint a couple of times. In the bottom corner, I have my first failed attempt out of many. On my successful run, I used the first turn to set up with Sword Stance. We can take one Flamethrower, and Drain Punch can one-shot Houndoom without buffs. I used a Drain Punch on Flareon to restore some of the health that we had lost earlier. Rapidash is tricky, as it will use either Sunny Day, Flare Blitz, or Bounce. If it uses Sunny Day, Infernape will be strong enough to take us out next turn. Flare Blitz does a lot of recoil damage, which makes finishing it off easier. For Magmartyr, I stuck with Poison Jab, in case we needed the last Drain Punch for an emergency. Infernape uses Flare Blitz, but without Sunny Day, we survive. One Poison Jab is enough to finish it off. Lucian is up next, and his team should be an easy sweep. Mr. Mime leads, and uses Reflect and Light Screen to raise his team's defenses. I use these first two turns to set up with Sword Stance. It's beyond now with bees and gets off a single beam. We survive and luckily don't get confused. For Bronzong, I use Stream Punch. It survives and uses Calm Mind as an offensive move. Next turn, it goes down to a second Dream Punch. Alakazam uses Psychic, which takes us down to 85 health. Needle Arm is able to bring it down. Last up is Gallade, and we outspeed it and finish the battle with one last Needle Arm. Time to face off against Cynthia! Spiritomb starts off by using Silverwind. We can tank two of them, so I use the opportunity to set up with Swords Dance. Needle Arm takes out the next turn. For Tokakiss, I use Drain Punch, as we'll need to be as close to full health for Garchomp. Another Drain Punch on Rosary does the job. Even though we have the Quick Claw, we still get outsped the majority of the time. I use Needle Arm instead of Drain Punch for the same type of attack bonus. Milotic, while tanky, is no match for Needle Arm. Last is Lucario, which gets off an Aura Sphere. We manage to tank it with only one health left and things with one last Dream Punch. With that, we manage to beat the champion in the game with only Cacnea. This took a while to do and it was a ton of fun. Generation 4 introduced so many new challenges and concepts that made this solo run really refreshing. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on my social medias listed down below. And with that said, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all next time.